we're not in the job, I think, of, destroy, of destroying people's dignity either. Um, I think we do actually have the power to hurt people, and that shouldn't necessarily hold us back. It's something we should at least be aware of. I mean, we should suffer on account of it as well, that's all I can say. Uh, so, um, you know, there are certainly people around, I would be tempted to say that about, all I can do really is, is point out what I don't, what I don't like about their, about their work time after time. Um, a lot of people, I mean, you know, are up and down. I mean, I've, well, you mentioned Yana McIntosh and the monument. I mean, I, I, I was the only person who thought she gave a really terrible performance in Hedda Gabler. But I mean, that did, and I, what? Oh, 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 oh good. Uh, but uh, you and most of the actors I know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but, but the, the, I'm sorry, I mean, this, this is, this, I don't want to start picking on an, yeah. extremely, on an extremely talented actress who is everybody's favorite, including mine, but who, because of being everybody's favorite, ought to be held to a high standard. Uh, and I'm not quite how I, how I got onto that. I think you just put it in my head. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, is it, have I, is it, how, do we keep, how do we get a message across if we're being disappointed all the time? What do we do to change, right? Well, I suppose we just, we do just go on saying we're being, we're being disappointed. That's right. um, and I suppose you can say another production at Cannes Stage. I mean, my own beef with Cannes Stage, actually, is that they, all the most interest, they put all the most interesting new plays um, on, on in Berkeley Street. And uh, they put all, and, uh, they, 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 they reserve their main stage of the Bloomer Appel for what they think are going to be popular things. Mm -hmm. And I guess some of them are. I can't imagine that last musical with Jackie Richardson was popular. <laughs> uh, you know, like you, you, know, you, have, you have one hit, so you go on trying to replicate it. Uh, uh, Kansas City is a very funny position. I mean, it, it's, it's um, in London terms, it's sort of the, the, the Royal Court in Hampstead and the West End all roll into one. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, though, um, it's the victim of something in Toronto that everybody knows is bad, everybody knows is wrong, and no one knows how to fix, which is the lack of medium-sized houses for medium-sized theater. You know, it's, it's the factory in Tarragon, or it's the Royal Alex and the Princess of Wales, mm -hmm. and there's nothing in between. Everything has to be um, you know, a great big mega hit, or at least brought in on tour, so nobody has to take too much of a financial risk on it, or it has to be a small play. And some of the small plays take off, and what do you know, you know they come back again at the Tarragon a year later, and, and that's all we ever hear of them. And that must be extremely frustrating. I mean, economically and, and psychologically, people actually trying not just to make a living, but to make a reputation, and to have their work stay around for a bit. And it's frustrating for us, too, as onlookers, I think. Um, one would like things one praised to stay around for a certain amount of time. It would, it would massage our egos no end, actually. Just think, the quotes could run and run and run, yeah. as well as the place. Yeah. And, I mean, nobody knows a way out of that. Maybe there just isn't the audience in Toronto to support it. What do you think? What's the uh, last word to Lynn? Lynn. Oh. Um, I agree with my colleagues here. Um, uh, I, I, I read a, a, a book of reviews 50 years ago. Not... I didn't read it 50 years ago. The book is 50 years old. reviews. And the critics said, you know, time after time after time after time after time, with this one particular actor or playwright or whatever, we say, you're screaming your lines. And then the person goes on to the next performance and he screams his lines. So sometimes I think, we think, I'm sure, that we're just talking to the air. And then other times we might make a point. So we can only continue to point out if something isn't working again and again and again and again. Maybe somebody will take the hint. I mean, Richard used Can Stage as an example. There are other theaters as well. Can Stage is just the biggest target. They have all this money and they go to all this effort and then we see the result and we think another disappointing day in the theater. Uh, you can just keep, just keep on keeping on. Someone said to me, uh, uh, I asked for advice. What, what advice would you give a young critic? And the person said, read everything, see everything you can, learn as much as you can about the theater, and if you get jaded by it all, quit. I think that's good, ex good advice. And I guess let, uh, apropos of us all trying and trying, there is, there's a famous Yiddish proverb that says, if one person calls you a donkey, don't listen. If two people call you a donkey, don't listen. If three people call you a donkey, buy a saddle. 
<laughs> That's what I think the role of criticism can be. Yeah, but I, I actually, well, there are two different things here. It's one thing for theatre to change its policy. It's another for an, an actor or a writer to change their nature. People do what they can do, uh, and there's a limit to how much we can affect that, or maybe even how much we should affect that. Um, so um, I, I think the idea of, oh, pull your socks up, you can do better next time, and, and what's more, I could do better if I were there, <laughs> which is the undertone of one or two critics I could think of. I think that's just a fallacy. Actually, I'd say I think the one unforgivable critical sin is to be patronizing. And I'm sure we're all guilty of it from time to time. But um, I like to think that both of us up here are, are, you know, are, not, are not guilty of it too much. And I do tend to turn off from, from, from critics um, who, who strike that note um, time after time, whose characteristic note that is. I suppose that's a better way of putting it. Okay. Well, thank. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the panel, uh, Lynn, uh, Ro uh, Robert, and Richard. I'd like to thank the audience and, of course, Theatre Museum Canada for having us all here. And thank you all for coming. I'm glad we'll be at my door tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to give this a star rating, but you know, apparently that's not. So I'll just thank everybody for coming. We have a little uh, gift for you. Uh, gift certificate from Theatre Books so Ooh, you can buy all the books oh, that you've written. That's a good gift. <laughs> that's about the best gift there is. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Um, if there's anything else back there to help yourself, if you want to know anything more about Theatre Museum events, make sure we have your contact information. Thanks a lot for coming and come to the next one. <laughs>